Well, social services in the UK have come under fire for forcibly taking children from their parents for seemingly minor reasons. Care workers insist they are always putting the best interests of the children first, but families say they're needlessly broken up, and critics claim the system is all wrong. It's a process that's shrouded in secrecy by the law, and social services refuse to discuss individual cases. You're going to face your fear, because fear is what? Fear is the mind killer. And you're going to help us to catch, who are you going to help us to catch? All the people, Papa, Miss Collins, Mr. Scott. All the policemen, all the speak social about, services. Speak up, speak up. All the, all the shopkeepers, all, all the cafes, all the pizza and specials. Who did you mention just now? Who, caf what? Caf, caf. 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 Who's caf caf? caf. You know, Kafka. people who work at Kafka. Kafka. What is Kafka? Kafka is the day we the. They're for children. They Kafka. work. They work with the social services. And what did they do to you? They do sex. They, they do touch each other. They touch me and Gabriel. They have plastic quillings and they um, stick it in our bottom. Who does? Who sticks it in your bottom? Kafka. Social uh, services. Richie, Everybody Ella. does. Who, who, who? Everybody. Does your mother do it? No. Do I do it? No. Who does it then? Papa, Mrs. Holly, the school. Who? Parents. My dad's family. Tell, tell me some family. more people. Tell me some more people. Parents, I'm interested. police. What about the teachers at school? Who's the main one? Papa, Mr. Hollings, Mrs. Forsdyke. Who's Mrs. Forsdyke? Mrs. Forsdyke. Mrs. She's the head teacher, teacher, head teacher of our school. What happens in the church? And we do sacri baby sacrifice and eat the baby. What do you mean sacrifice and eat the baby? So we kill the baby and yeah. eat it and drink the blood from it. Is that true, Gabriel? Yes. And we dance with the skulls. You what? We dance with the skulls in the church. What the skulls? Church. The skulls baby of the skulls. baby. Pardon? Baby the skull, skulls. The skulls of the baby. You dance with the baby skulls? Yes. And, and who I, kills the baby? Papa, me, Elisa. Who kills the babies? Papa. And what, he gets you to help him? Yes. yes. Shoot. So he tells us to hold our, uh, the hand with a knife, and then he holds his hand on, on our hand, so then he cuts the baby's head off. And then he tips it upside down, and then we drain the blood. We and then what they do? And then we drink, we cook it, and then we drink the blood, and then after we go and dance with the skulls. I had a case the other day where a mother was about to deliver her child in a, in a hospital and five policemen and two social workers came into the delivery room to seize that child. Five policemen with a, with, with a mother who is helpless lying there giving birth to her baby. I mean, it is, you can't believe such things are happening. Christopher Booker says there are hundreds, possibly thousands of cases a year in which children are wrongly taken, and he's suspicious about the motives. There are around 60,000 children in care in the UK. A woman jailed for waving to her children across the street. A mother in court over sending her eight-year-old son a birthday card. They may sound like surreal sound bites from a totalitarian state, but actually they're headlines from the UK. There is a very considerable amount of money to be made for, for, for uh, if you're an adoptive parent you take in one of these children or you're a foster carer you can get 400 pounds a week for each child which is a if you have two or three adopted children it's a hell of a lot of money
just we, we, we decided to, to stop, stop touching each other, other. and stop, stop touching, touching each other and, we have so. will face and stop our touching fear. ourselves and face our urge. And and what stop, else are you going to stop doing? And stop and touching stop. ourselves. And, gonna stop touching and, ourselves. and what and else stop, are you going to stop? And stop killing babies. A government file has emerged containing further potential allegations of abuse. Dealing with unnatural sexual behaviour at the top of government. Any allegations in relation to that file will be passed to the police. The demands for transparency have again reached the House of Commons. The file, found in the National Archives and highlighted by Sky News yesterday, is entitled Allegations Against Former Public, and then a word missing, of unnatural sexual proclivities security aspects. It's dated 1980 to 1981 and is still held by the Cabinet Office on grounds of national security. It went through Margaret Thatcher's office and was prepared for the then Prime Minister by the security services. The revelations by Sky News yesterday about the document were significant and illuminating and there's a clear public interest in knowing whether a former Prime Minister received a briefing on sexual crimes committed by a senior intelligence officer or officers, regardless of whether the inquiry get to see the document, can the Home Secretary not commit to publish the document now in the public interest? The file has been passed to the police so that they are able to look at any is inst issues within that file which they should be properly in, uh, investigating. And I can assure the House that the file will be made available. None of it surprises Don Hale, a journalist who has spent 30 years trying to uncover the truth. He's adamant there are other secret files. Well, I think there's a lot of files out there. I mean, I've been told quite clearly by, you know, ex-coppers, ex-spooks, or whatever, you know, that there are a number of, there is a paper trail, there are files still available. And I, I did a piece in July saying where these files were, and some of these included the National Archives. The Home Secretary has promised to announce the next head of the child abuse inquiry by the end of the month. Regaining the trust of survivors will take far longer. File has finally been opened. Its focus, the diplomat, the late Sir Peter Heyman. He travelled the world representing Britain, but back in London, his sexual habits were discussed at the very highest levels. The file shows he was sending obscene material through the post. He kept detailed records of his sexual activities and fantasies. In the report, it says, the material in the record relating to children appeared all to be fantasy. But allegations of him being an abuser have been published in Private Eye magazine, accusing him of paedophilia. The file concludes the allegations were generally accurate. Two significant incidents are highlighted but not detailed. One in Baghdad in 1959 to 60, and one while High Commissioner to Canada in Ottawa. We're looking at Prime 19, but if we do an advanced search. It was university lecturer Chris Murphy who stumbled across the file and alerted Sky News. It had been prepared for the then Prime Minister, Margaret Thatcher, and had been held secret for 35 years. Following an outcry, it was raised in the House of Commons, and it's now been released to the National Archives. This document's being made public uh, not because of the government's inquiry into child sex abuse, but it's been made public despite the government's inquiry into child sex abuse. We've had to rely on a, a, an academic from Salford University to discover this file, and, 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 and we've had to rely on backbench MPs uh, to press government to make it public. Heyman also worked for the intelligence service, MI6. The files confirm he was also a member of the paedophile information exchange. He died in 1992. He did face allegations before he died. In 1981, the Maverick MP, Geoffrey Dickens, accused him in the House of Commons of being a child abuser. But as far as we know, Sir Peter Heyman was only ever charged with one offence, an act of gross indecency in a public toilet. 
The file also reveals the air of panic within Thatcher's government about how they should handle the Heyman matter, as she described it in this letter. A secret briefing note is also in the file. It explicitly says that the line to take is that there has been no cover-up. The documents show the British establishment hard at work, ensuring they protect themselves. It's telling that there is no consideration of any potential victims. But the Westminster of the 1980s was a place where secrets could be buried. Unraveling it all is a slow process, and the Heyman file is just one part of it. I feel that this inquiry is so important and, the, at, the, and at the forefront of it are so many victims. My message to the survivors is that I have committed to undertake this inquiry, that it will be robust, that it will be independent and that I will uh, work in a timely way. As soon as she moves to London, she'll have to start delivering on the British government's promises on child abuse. I am now more determined than ever to expose the people behind these despicable crimes and the people in institutions that knew about abuse but didn't act, that failed to help when it was their duty, sometimes their very purpose, to do so. She knows the inquiry could unravel an alleged paedophile network operating in Westminster in the 1970s and 80s. That's why both Baroness Butler-Sloss and Fiona Wolfe had to step aside. They were too close to the British establishment. I'm Gordon Coulter. For many years I served as a law enforcement officer. Today it's my privilege to host this program on a little known area in law enforcement but important to every small community and every large city across our vast country. It's the area of satanic cults and how they impact our families, our children, and our communities. In investigating homicides, there are some very obvious ritualistic markings that will appear on a body that is the result of satanic killings. But some of the markings are a little more subtle. And so what we're going to do is give you an illustration of this on our model and also retrace some of the markings that were in the St. Joseph's case. You'll note on our model that there's oftentimes a cut that goes from behind the ear all the way down to the throat. You'll also notice that on the carotid, this right here would be cut where the blood would have been drained. And oftentimes there's wax laid on it to cover it up afterwards after the body um, has uh, deceased. They will also put wax over the eyelids after they're deceased, and so those would be some of the head markings that would indicate a ritualistic killing. Another area that's obvious in these kinds of ritualistic carvings would be the pentagram or the inverted pentagram on the right and the left side of the upper chest. This oftentimes is the signature of the high priest. Another area that you might find satanic ritual carving is in the stomach area. And as was true in the St. Joseph's case, the pentagram or the inverted pentagram was carved right here in his abdomen area. And you'll note again the points representing again the goat's head. 
Another area we'll want to note is the foot area. And right here behind the ankle bone, there is oftentimes an incision, just as our markings would indicate. And beyond that, on the bottom of the foot, they will sometimes cut the flesh and peel it back. And so you'll also note that. Another thing that is oftentimes done in ritualistic homicides is a penis is placed inside the mouth of the deceased person. Now as you look at the body of a person such as this, please note each and every one of these markings. You might just see one of the markings. It could be just the carotid or it might be just the marks behind the ankle or as obvious as the pentagram. But whatever it is, if you look just a little bit deeper, ask a few more questions and note to the investigators more information, it could lead to the solution of other crimes that have been just passively sitting on the desk without any clues.